Hey everyone, welcome back. We're going to be doing our part two of our end of year wins episode. And I hope if you listen to last week's episode, it sparked the conversation, sparked the ideas, and maybe got you just to think about maybe what you've already done or motivated you if, you, if you're like, I can't come up with anything, to really think about what you're going to do in this upcoming year. Welcome to the Ultimate Crowdsource Personal Finance Show. This is Chooseify. All right, guys, very excited to dive into this week's episode. And to help me with this, I have my co-host, Brad, here with me today. Brad, I think we're just going to get right back into the wins. Yeah, let's do it. We've got a whole list here. We're going to try to uh, bomb through these and read as, as many as we can, play as many voicemails. So yeah, going to start with Spencer. So Spencer wrote in saying, hey, Brad, here are year-end wins for 2021. Number one, my wife and I have crossed $100,000 in non-retirement investments. This is in addition to maxing out her 403B my simple IRA, and her backdoor Roth IRA for this year. Two, I started an LLC with my partner, and we've generated $20,000 in passive income. We anticipate this will increase to over $100,000 in 2022. So far, we have been investing in small local businesses that aren't yet bankable through offering lines of credit, buying equipment and leasing it back to them, and buying ownership interests in them. We expect to be acquiring real estate and leasing it back to these businesses in the future as well. Not only do I enjoy this type of work, but it should provide engaging part-time work as I approach FI in the next five to 10 years. <laughs> I, I almost like, what? what, what, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's amazing. All right. It, it, it's so hard not to stop, Jonathan, on going, all of these things. We'll, we'll just have a comment or two on the back end yeah. of that. <laughs> Three, my wife's employer will begin offering an HSA starting in 2022, and we plan to max it out going forward, investing our contributions in index funds for the long-term play. And four, by April, we should hit, ooh, this is interesting, mortgage FI. As in, we'll have enough money invested that 4% should cover our mortgage in perpetuity. Right now, I just can't see us paying it off early at a 2.6% fixed rate. Oh, mortgage FI. You know, I think I didn't have the term, which is pretty self-evident, but I, but I definitely remember thinking about that calculus as you work your way up. So we did this episode called the checkpoints of FI, where we say it's not just like zero or in debt or zero and then FI. It's like a continuum where you're increasing the control the whole way, right? And Brad, I guess I would say that I am very handily now past mortgage FI, very handily right. past mortgage FI. So yeah, I, we need to add that to the checkpoints. And yeah. uh, I mean- I, I wish Spencer, maybe Spencer could call him within our voicemail and tell us a little bit more about how this got on his radar. I mean, people, you don't just like wake up one morning and say, Hey, let me start an LLC. And then, um, you know, I'm going to buy uh, equipment and lease it back to offices and buy land and lease it back to them. Like, that's not just something that happens. It happens because your zone of awareness has been increased. You're aware of someone else that like, I just want to point out, this is the pro This is why we get ourselves outside of what we know, which is great. And we try to put ourselves in situations where we encounter ideas that we haven't heard before. And then we vet them, we test them, we look for patterns on, is this something that would work for us? And I want to know more about what Spencer's doing and how he had this idea. I hope maybe he can follow up with us. Maybe he can leave us a voicemail. Just share us a little bit more about what this actually is. We've only had one guest to this point. Their process was buying a pre-existing business and then running that and managing it. But that sounded a little bit more like a job. You're buying a business and you're taking on a management role. I mean, he's very explicitly using the word passive here. And um, I mean, I am very intrigued. Yeah, no, that's super cool. Yeah, hopefully Spencer will follow up. It sounds like if you have capital and you have a little bit of know-how, that that looks like something that's, that's doable. So yeah, that's awesome. All right, Jonathan, let's uh, move on. We have a, a voicemail here, right? Yes, and this voicemail is from Allison. Hey guys from Choose FI. Uh, my name is Allison and I'm here to share our 2021 year end wins. Uh, for us, this was a big year. We sold our house in Oregon and we moved to Texas to become renters in a state with zero income tax. So some pretty serious geo arbitrage. Uh, and we took all the equity from our home sale and put it into our VTSAX. So now we've got a pretty nice snowball that is rolling, uh, collecting up some more cash, hopefully on the path to five. Uh, I also got a part-time job that offers a 401k and I'm currently contributing hundred percent till I hit the maximum contribution. And I attended my very first FinCon virtually. 
Um, hopefully I'll get to do an in-person one once COVID is less scary. Anyways, super excited to keep going down the path of Fi. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> what a great year to oh, sell man. a house, right? Like <laughs> Seriously. There was a lot of there was a lot of profit this year on uh, mortgages, but it's it's just paper, I guess, unless you realize it. So assuming you can and I mean talk about an arbitrage play. Where was she moving from, Brad? That I didn't catch, but I heard obviously moved to Texas with 0% income tax. Yeah. Yeah. There's a few states in this country that have uh, zero income tax. Now you got to look at that. There's different ways that states collect tax. They collect it via sales tax. They collect it via property tax. They collect it via um, uh, income tax. And I think there's a few that have a capital gains uh, uh, little addendum on there too. So you got to kind of be aware of the full picture, but people have definitely figured out um, that pattern. And, and there's some, there's some real money you make. I know someone that did the inverse of that. They moved from Florida. I know him personally moved from Florida to California. That would be the opposite. That would be a reverse <laughs> your arbitrage. And it would be, you know, so they, they were definitely looking at their tax bill saying, Whoa, wow. That's, um, there's a difference there. So moving on. <laughs> All right. Next voicemail we got is from Paul. Hey, Brad and Jonathan, this voicemail goes through my choose a experience in 2021 all of which adds up to a huge life win. My name's Paul. I'm in North Carolina. I started Chooseify in March at the recommendation of my best friend, Luke. That totally woke me up. My family immediately cut our subscription services we weren't using and trimmed the other excess fat of our spending. I started maxing out my HSA, 403B, and 457 plans from work, but then came the big lifestyle design changes. I approached my boss about changing my role and relocating. We didn't currently live in a community we enjoyed, and I wanted to be closer to friends and family. All summer, I worked on changing my role at work so that it would both be more satisfying and would accommodate my move. Finally, this fall, my family found a house an hour away from our old one with a similar monthly payment, but because of the hot housing market, we were able to sell our old house at a great price. We now live in an awesome neighborhood, have an awesome community, and we're only two miles away from my best friend, Luke, nice. the guy who recommended you. <laughs> Just this month, our move was paid for in furniture we sold, I met the minimum spend on my first Chase Sapphire preferred card to cover repairs on the new house and got over $100 of unclaimed money thanks to the Forbes article you guys sent out. Now my new job will be less time consuming, more satisfying, and only slightly less money while it accommodates the new location with a great community. Thanks to you guys, I know how to get to FI, have a better work situation while I get there, and have optimized my community to really get the most out of life today. I'm rolling over episode 100, which gives me a solid financial background I feel comfortable using to talk to virtually anyone about money. I plan to catch up to, to the real current episodes sometime soon. Thanks to Brad, Jonathan, and the whole Choose a Five community. Thanks for spreading the fire. I hope this voicemail from one listener shows how life-changing your podcast is when you go down the road less traveled. You know, I think some people, um, when they haven't got the financial picture figured out, they think of the whole concept of lifestyle design as being out of reach or maybe like a trite thing to say. But if once, I mean, it get, it becomes so much more obtainable and so much more attractive if you just start to make some basic financial moves. You get this in place and then suddenly you realize, hey, I'm at the stage of my journey where I need more lifestyle design information. Like, how do I negotiate? being able to work remote. How do I negotiate a raise? And Brad, you've talked about this in the past. Wouldn't it be cool if we could just like find a way to do the things we thrive doing and not do the things that like destroy us slowly? Because there's probably someone else that really enjoys it. It's just not me. And I have the luxury of saying, I'm not doing that anymore. Can I start to create a lifestyle where I could spend more time doing stuff that lights me up, less time doing stuff that just makes me hate every aspect or every part <laughs> of my job? You're actually saving your job, right? Yeah, no, you're exactly right. And yeah, Jillian Johnsrud gave a presentation on this a couple of years back at a Camp Fi, I think in Florida. And it, it it really opened my eyes to kind of your greatest energy, right? And like what you get energy from, from a certain aspect of your job, like, and other things that you might hate, there almost invariably is somebody who, who gets energy from that thing that you hate. And you can't imagine it, right? Because you despise it, but somebody else that lights them up. Right. So what's so cool about Phi and and just this entire mental reframe is just looking for those aspects. Like 
your company doesn't want you working on things that you hate and make you want to leave the job, right? Like that's not in their best interest. If they have a happy employee, they have somebody who is lit up to come to work every day to do the things that he or she loves doing. I mean, that's, that's a win, right? So it's just, again, it, it's these rethinks, right? It's how do I look at my life a little bit differently and having that space financially, like you said, Jonathan, it makes all the difference in the world, right? Because you don't, you're not stressed all the time about, oh, that next bill or the next mortgage payment, whatever it is, you have a little bit of space and you can take a step back and say, what do I want my life to look like? How can I design this? So yeah, just a really great voicemail from Paul and yeah, Luke, really nice that, uh, that he's spreading the fire and now he's got a new, new neighbor. We uh, created episode 100 as to be an episode that's very easy to share and be able to on-ramp people to this conversation so we can start speaking the same language. You know, it allows us to really move to the next level, building community, uh, sharing ideas, et cetera. So, you know, if you have someone in your life that uh, you're trying to get, you know, more on board with this concept of the aggregation of marginal gains, doing better with their money, and you want to present it to them in a non-intimidating fashion, uh, maybe consider sharing episode 100, chooseify.com slash 100, or just look up episode 100 in, you know, in Chooseify on their podcast player of choice. I think that might be a great way to introduce someone to this concept of five. We got a wonderful email from Alana says, hi, my wins this year are plentiful and the ideology of this valued action, especially related to finances is thanks to you. Traveled to Anna Maria Island in Florida, Outer Banks, North Carolina, and a crazy fun California trip, including lots of travel rewards and a special stay at Ventana Big Sur. Maxed out a solo 401k, my 457, his 401k, the Roth IRA, and my employer contribution to my solo 401k, if I can figure out the math, that is. <laughs> All that in addition to throwing some money at our mortgage and putting some in the brokerage account. I think we're hitting around a 40% savings rate. I also was able to move my clients from insurance base to private pay, all while accruing more training and supervision as a therapist. My husband and I are taking steps to possibly get into real estate, and this is incredible. We don't shop for much other than needs. We definitely go out to eat a lot and at great restaurants because we value that time and enjoyment with the shows and experiences. We will have some big purchases, just did the driveway, needed a car in this market, but we have the cash in hand and we'll even be able to handle some, some surgeries that have to happen with our dog, but we have an overfunded emergency fund and we'll be able to use that to get through these expenses rather than it just sitting there. So we're not perfect and we're but we're definitely not keeping up with the joneses as far as housing and car and we're loving the journey thanks again alana thank you so much for sharing yeah and jonathan I, I wanted to just quickly touch on on the not perfect at all the goal here is not perfection the goal is creating a life that you love right and there is there's no perfection like we always say there's nothing you have to do to check a box to be a, a card carrying member of the choose of i community it's nothing like that so if you like to go out to eat at great restaurants because you value it, then spend, spend what you value, right? That is a wonderful thing and you should not be ashamed of that for one second. There's no perfection. This perfection doesn't mean cutting all your expenses. That's not the goal here. Perfection means, again, there, there is no perfection, but moving towards a life that you find value in, that to me is the goal. So a lot of wonderful stuff. All right, Jonathan, our next email is from Bonnie. And Bonnie wrote in, here's my year-end win. I landed a fully remote job in tech where my total compensation increased 46%, thus allowing me to max my 401k, make triple house payments and student loan payments, and move even closer to debt-free and FI. Woohoo. That's awesome. I think people <laughs> underappreciate so cool. how good it feels to get back to debt free or even in some case, I remember this point for me, get back to broke, like getting back to broke for most of us is like an aspirational journey. We haven't been back to a net worth of zero since before we started college. It's a huge deal. Yeah, that is super cool. Yeah, I know. I know you love that phrase back to broke and, and it does resonate with a lot of people, right? Because again, the goal is, is not some aspirational, you need to be at FI tomorrow. The goal is just working a little bit better on your financial situation where you are. And like you, $160,000 in student loan debt, Jonathan, the goal wasn't, okay, I'm going to get to five next year, but can I pay my student loans off in two years, three years, five years, whatever it is, just making progress. And I think that's the key is we're all just trying to make progress where we are. All right, this next message is from Cameron. Cameron says, I've always stressed out over money, uh, spend and freak out about spending. 
but I started worrying about long-term goals in 2019 when we found out that my wife was pregnant. God's plan, not ours. I knew I didn't want to be the typical parent who is always either working or worrying about money. I wanted to enjoy time with my child. So after reading a few books, Hoopla recommended Playing With Fire, which led me to you guys. The rest of 2019 and 2020 was making the foundational changes, trimming fat from the budget, increasing contributions to 401k and HSA, simplifying my investments so that they actually started making money and stuff like that. At the end of 2020, we decided we needed to move from South Carolina back to Ohio so our daughter could grow up around her family. We spent around three months looking for a house before realizing it was going to be a little hard to find something good in this market while living several states away. So we decided to rent until we saw the rent prices. In February, my brother-in-law, a realtor, found a deal on a 960-square-foot home in need of a little love. Since our finances are in a stable position with our net worth steadily increasing, we decided to make it our in-between home that we can rent out when we find our next home. Worst case would be selling the house for a loss if the market happened to decrease and we decided we didn't want to rent it out, but we figured that that risk was much better than spending at least 10K in rent. Now I'm going to keep going because a few more things here, but I just wanted to point out, I think, and, and we had Scott and Brad, maybe you can look up this episode, Scott Trench and, and Mindy from Bigger Pockets uh, came on the show talking to, and they wrote a book together talking about buying the strategies for buying your first home. And one of the biggest mistakes that homeowners make is forgetting that you can have more than one, like going, getting your, getting your forever home instead of getting your in between home. You can't afford the home that you necessarily really, really wanted, but you just end up with something that doesn't meet any of your goals. And so just realizing you can't have an in-between home. Like you, you can use one home purchase as a stepping stone for the one that you really want by being smart about it. Yeah. And Jonathan, that was episode 312, first time home buyer. That was actually earlier this year in April of 2021. There's some really good concepts in there. And I don't think I necessarily frame that exactly the way I wanted to just now, but I think the episode speaks for itself. They have a wonderful book. You should read it if you're a first time home buyer. Uh, but also, uh, that episode will give you a great primer to see if maybe there's, you know, more information there for you and whether it's worth exploring. So definitely check out that episode. All right, back to, back to Cameron's win. We sold my car for almost as much as I bought it. I, I'm now working from home full time, uh, a couple beds and all kinds of extra stuff. You realize that you don't need when downsizing. We made so much on our house after only five years that we were able to buy this house with cash. We've done all the repairs ourselves going from one of the ugliest houses on the street to one of the nicest. The value of the house just keeps going up and up. And uh, since we're not burning money on rent, we don't see any rush finding the next house. We're just enjoying the simplicity. The best part, though, our daughter knows her extended family, and I have the freedom in my work schedule for us to go all to the park, the orchard, the zoo, or whenever. The uh, The aggregation of marginal, of marginal gains in 2019 and 2020 allowed us to make a massive change without having to worry about money. Instead of trying to decide if we can afford to eat out, we just take food to my grandpa. Rather than wondering if we can uh, afford something, we're buying for others. Our mindsets have become so much less materialistic, freeing us to spend on what provides us value, eating healthy, uh, developmental toys and books for our daughter, family experiences, and helping our families. And I don't stress out about money anymore. We have a thousand dollar deductible that we have to pay. Uh, dump trucks can really mess up your car. So he's talking about his <laughs> car insurance. Old me would have panicked and spent all night in the spreadsheets trying to figure out how to make up the expense. Current me said, oh, well, money's there. And we went back to playing with my daughter. I didn't realize how much freedom I've already gained until this exact moment writing those words. But one of my biggest fears was always that I would end up being an absent father. And by making easy changes, just being deliberate with my money, I was able to be present with my daughter. So thank you for building a platform and a community that centralizes so much life-changing information. That is like the largest compliment. That was the goal, just a platform and a community to centralize this information that Brad, you and I have personally gotten so much benefit from. Yeah, it's amazing how our lives have transformed. And yeah, to see an email like this from Cameron, it's it's remarkable. I mean, just the changes that people are making to just make their families better, right? Like it, it's it's amazing. I mean, I know we we always say we get we get chills when reading these emails, and I mean it's it's honestly true. I've got uh, goosebumps right now. It's it it's just it's remarkable, right? Cameron spent the first year of this Phi journey just getting the foundational changes, as he said, and then to be able to make these these changes from a position of strength, right? And knowing what you want out of life. I mean, you can't ask for more. So huge congrats. 
We love these emails. We love these voicemails. We truly wish we could do 50 of these episodes and just read every single one of them. Uh, so we're trying to do our best to get as many in here. I'm going to share this one from Alex. Started a new job in September and for the first time negotiated the salary offer. I got up to 4% higher just by asking, not even giving any extra data. So she's saying, I didn't even do a good job, but I did it. And I still got an extra 4%. I have a, and I have a 401k for the first time with a 4% match. And I'm putting 75% of my paycheck for the first year in a small attempt to max it out and catch up. So Alex, huge win. Salary negotiation is massive. And Brad, I know we have at least two episodes uh, that really put some meat on this framework so people can feel confident about positioning themselves to ask for one. Yeah, Jonathan, that's episode 147 with Tori Dunlap and then episode 211 with The Financial Mechanic. And they give very specific items that you can talk through when you're negotiating. And it's just, uh, it's really cool to have it, it. Well, they might call them scripts on some levels. Like it just, it gets you prepared to go in there and have this win-win conversation. And that's what it truly is, right? It's not adversarial. It's how can I show my worth and how can I potentially earn more money? So yeah, it's just a, a really cool kind of rethink on, oh, this is such, like I said, an adversarial thing or, oh, I need to be nervous. It, I mean, listening to those episodes, it, it changes your mindset entirely. All right. This next voicemail is from Bridget. Hi, Brad and Jonathan. Wow. What a year. I discovered Choose If I in December last year, and my life has completely changed since then. To give you some background, I am 28, an engineer, and recently married. I've been a saver my whole life, but I was always saving for the next big purchase. I was feeling frustrated that the money always disappeared faster than it came in. After watching my boyfriend, now husband, invest for years, I finally gave in and started investing in November last year. In December 2020, a friend led me to choose FI. If you're listening, Shelby, thank you so much. I've binged over 140 episodes and have set a schedule to catch up by the end of 2022. And of course, I've made some huge changes in my life. I started saving 50% of my take-home pay, shopped for lower-priced home and auto insurance, opened the Chase Sapphire Preferred card, and received the 100,000-point bonus, and I will max out both my 401k and Roth IRA this year. All of that is great and amazing, but the biggest and best change I made this year came unexpectedly. In the last year, I became restless in my job. In April, I realized the job was no longer propelling me towards my long-term goals, and I lacked any work-life balance. I once enjoyed the work, but now it was draining me of any happiness. Thanks to having over a year's worth of expenses invested, I quit without another job in hand. Was it scary? Yes. Was I more relieved than I ever could have imagined? Yes. I had a job offer within a week of quitting, but I decided to wait. I took three months off and enjoyed what my husband likes to call fun employment, I accumulated multiple job offers and researched each one thoroughly before taking the absolutely fantastic job that I have now. Mm. I now make 60% more than I was making at my last job, and I get 26 weeks off every year. What? <laughs> Even better, the job is totally in line with my passion and long-term goals. <laughs> I've become exponentially happier in the last six months, and I take every opportunity to talk about the FI community and share Choose FI with anyone who will give me a moment of their time. Happy New Year, Choose FI. The fire is spreading. You're going to leave us hanging? Like, like 20, 20, 26 weeks off, 60% more. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, have you ever felt like, like sometimes when you're in it, you're in it, it's hard to see the bigger picture. It's hard to see how many options you actually have. And I think even if you don't know how it'll benefit you, bringing power to your side of the court, one of the best things you can do is just start positioning yourself to have financial reserves, positioning yourself to be able to afford to take a week to step out. Whatever it is, if it's toxic, to just step out without the fear of how am I going to keep the lights on? How am I going to pay the bills? How am I going to make it to the next paycheck? In her case, it was a year. Uh, and in my case, you know, I was thinking it was around, it was around two years for me. I was like, I can, I can go up to two years without a paycheck. And that's what gave me the courage to my boss to go to my boss, you know, when he did not take my proposal for some adjustments, you know, I wanted to make these adjustments and he said, no. And I was able to say, I don't think it's in my best interest to stay. And I was able to walk away, which gave, you know, us, Brad, the opportunity to really just really lean into choose that by full time. 
it, it, having that backbone of, you know, having paid off most of my debt, having several years of financial cushion or reserve allowed me to have what we call FU money. And, you know, it, that's it. It gives you the opportunity. Yeah. I could have gone back to work. Yeah. I could have gone to a different employer. I, you know, you had, you can always go back, but you can also take a view of the land once you've removed yourself and select who you're going to work for. We are in a very interesting time right now where there are so many jobs available and they're looking for rock star talent. You know, if you could have the mentality that she had in this voicemail, Bridget just said, what do I want to do? What do I want it to look like? And holy crap, Brad. Yeah, it's amazing. That position of strength. That's what I wrote down, right? She didn't have to run and jump to another job or accept the first job offer. She was able to take her time, survey what the scene looked like, right? And not rush because her life wasn't going to fall apart without that job, right? So many people who live on the edge financially their lives will crumble without a job. And Bridget was able to take that step back, wait, look at all these job offers, find something 60% more and I'm 26. That, that almost sounds like a, like a typo. If she, if she didn't say it out loud, I would think it was a typo. But I mean, that's, that is amazing. Truly, truly amazing. All right, uh, Brad, this next uh, email that we got was from John. All right, Jonathan. So John wrote in, major life win. As a high school teacher, my wife maxed out her 403B and 457 in addition to her pension for the past five years. Coupled with the bull market returns, her supercharged retirement contributions gave her the confidence and freedom to leave teaching this year. Now she is working from home as a freelance curriculum developer and bartends at our favorite brewery. She is loving the new Coast Fi lifestyle and our quality of life is 100% better. Thanks for all the work you do and the content you've put out. I'm a plastic scientist who began to follow you folks early in my career, just after my wife and I began dating. We house hack a duplex, drive used cars, max at our HSA, my 401k, wow, mega backdoor Roth IRA wow. and travel hack extensively. This year was a free trip to Seattle and $14,000 savings on an eight day trip to Maui. Wow. Our goals are to build generational wealth while still enjoying the journey. I recently turned down a job offer from Tesla because it would take us away from our low cost of living area with the friends and family that make us the happiest. Having a wonderful life partner is the ultimate life hack. Despite all the frugal wins and investment optimizations I've investigated, the best ROI has been the $9 bottle of Aldi wine, an hour long conversation where we laid out our goals and values as a couple and pin them to our refrigerator. Seeing that reminds me of our shared purpose and inspires me every day. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know that there's anything intelligent we can say about that. I mean, that is that that speaks for itself, right, Jonathan? Holy cow. It's really strong. Didn't Tesla just move to Texas? <laughs> Zero percent uh, yeah, tax rate, yeah, right? But hey, I, I respect the choices. Uh, yeah. It was interesting to think about, totally. uh, and it totally makes sense. But just, just totally sidebar, just piqued my attention. Tesla hiring plastic scientist. I was like, huh, interesting. Mm. You never know. Okay, moving on. This next one we got is from Tori and Cole. Here's a list of my and my husband's year and wins, a lot of which are thanks to the podcast. I discovered the Choose If I community in April and finally fully grasped the entire concept of financial independence. My husband has been trying to get me on board for years, but it was this podcast that really got me excited and more involved with the decision making for our finances. I just want to point out that is huge, like having partners that want to be involved. It isn't just total delegation and just, hey, wake me up when we're there. It's like, hey, let's have conversations about this. I'm actually interested. I'm like, that's wow. That's amazing. We will each have maxed out our 457 Roth IRA and HSA for the first time this year. In addition to our employer match, DCP, Brad, DCP. Yeah, that's, uh, I think that's defined contribution plan. So it's some type of retirement account. Gotcha. Kind of I, maybe even a pension. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly could be. The pre-tax contributions will lower our AGI enough to qualify for the stimulus that we didn't originally receive. So thanks to Sean Mullaney, buy tax guy, little shout out there. And, uh, we will be able to start contributing to our 403B in 2022. We're both employed by one of the few places that allow a double dip contribution. Wow. Talk about really understanding, right. you know, what benefits your employer offers. We were three years into our 30 year mortgage and were able to refinance to a 20 year mortgage while also lowering our monthly payment. 
My husband signed up and received the Chase Sapphire Preferred, the 100K sign up bonus, after hearing about it from you guys, which will cover our flights to St. Martin for our 10 year anniversary in 2022. Nice. Well done. My husband graduates with a master's of computer information science degree in December, which was fully played, paid for by his employer. So Tori and Cole, a huge, huge congratulations. Brad, we've heard that 100K sign up bonus get mentioned a couple of times. Is that still an active offer? That is not an active offer. That was the all-time high bonus that Chase offered on that card uh, earlier this year. But the card bonus currently, as we're recording this in mid-December of 2021, is at 60,000 uh, Chase Ultimate Rewards points, which is still, that's the standard offer on that card, which, yeah, I mean, we say that's our our absolute number one travel rewards card, even at that 60,000 points. And I'll also add on to that for individuals. We just recently did a travel rewards episode. Brad will bring it up. But one of the big things that a lot of people get excited about going into the end of the year, beginning of the next year is the Southwest Companion Pass. And if you have not yet listened to that episode, I mean, what a great opportunity as you go into the new year to start thinking about how to have your companion pass. And Brad, what episode was that? Yeah, that was episode 353, Families Fly Free with Lynn Mettler. All right, so you can find these episodes on your podcast player. Or just go to chooseavi.com slash 353. All right, Brad, the next uh, email that we got is from Stacy. All right, Stacy wrote in... This past year was the culmination of a huge effort enabled by five principles. I'm currently taking an 18-month mini retirement to pursue my dream of writing full-time without endangering our goal of retiring by 2030. This is after finally paying $116,000 in school loans, moving to a lower-cost area, and acquiring a fixer-upper with the intent of airbnb it when ready. I wish I'd understood a lot sooner that even our very modest salaries could be hugely powerful with intentional spending and saving. I spent far too many years being intimidated by investing. Thank you so much for spreading the fire. Well, thank you for sharing with us and with the community. Yeah. All right. And the next email that we got is from John. And John says, the biggest one that I had so far is that I paid off my mortgage on my condo this past Friday. I realize in retrospect that I could have and should have done this years ago before finding the fire community, but I was living the, on, the uh, you know, the YOLO, you only live once, life, <laughs> all of those years, blowing my money on cars, partying, and other stuff. The big progress started early last year, and after binging Choose If I and Dave Ramsey podcast and reading every finance article I could find with the help of the pandemic shutdown and cashing in a couple whole life insurance policies, I completed saving an eight-month emergency fund. By August of 2020, my car loan was paid off. My original plan was just to add that car payment to my mortgage and pay it off in three more years. But when, then I looked at my spending and I realized how much I was still blowing on weekend entertainment. It was eye-opening to save the least. I figured out how I could make a few small sacrifices in that department. And after sending literally every other paycheck to my mortgage, I've paid off the remaining $39,000 in the past 15 months. Now, while I only have 16,000 in investments, with all of these expenses gone, I have a plan to save and invest 35 to 40% of my income and retire in eight years with a pension and markets willing around 500,000 to my name. Thanks, Brad, Jonathan, and the FIRE community for the inspiration and support. And thank you so much for sharing. I mean, it really, you know, Brad, I think one of the things that people get hung up on is the idea of a budget. And I know you've always, you, you're not you're not personally a huge fan of that, but I think what both of us can agree on, and I think what anybody that's being intellectually honest about should uh, be on the same page is, is doing some sort of a spending audit, knowing how much your life actually cost. Yeah, without a doubt. And I mean, I think that's the way when people are getting into the financial independence community is the very first step is to do precisely that. Just figure out what does your life cost? What income's coming in? What are your assets? And what are your liabilities? What do you owe? And just putting that on paper for the very first time is really eye opening. And it just it allows you to be honest with yourself, not beat yourself up over past maybe mistakes that you may have made or things that you wish you had done. But realizing where you are today and how do you move forward and yeah i mean john's email is fantastic because it shows how much of this is based around your own personal situation and some flexibility like he said he only quote unquote has sixteen thousand dollars in investments but it doesn't matter because now his life doesn't cost very much right he's been able to pay off this debt he's been able to pay off the mortgage right and move forward with a life that just simply doesn't cost that much so you have so much more flexibility. And if in future years, he's going to save 40% of his income, he's going to be able to supercharge those investments 
plus a pension. I mean, he's he's got it made. This is amazing. So uh, Tracy sent us an email, and actually she said, uh, Brian Jonathan, I loved your end of year episode last year. I was so inspired by it that I wanted to share our list of FI and life wins for 2021. And that's what I love about this. I hope you're inspired by the individual sharing on these episodes and that you come and share yours, you know, next year so that we can feature them on this podcast. That That's exactly the point. Anyways, Tracy says, Brad and Jonathan, this, this past year we bought a house, but more importantly, we did so under the budget set for us by our financial advisor, which that's incredible. I understand how much pool there is to go to the other side of that. Well, look how much we can afford. We can afford the payments. Paid off the last of a $25,000 loan, resulting in a 12% increase in our take-home pay. We both negotiated and received pay increases, 9% and 10% respectively. Plus, plus my husband received a bonus and used it to pay an unexpected tax bill. We paid off our $18,000 car loan. We put $1,000 in an investment account outside of superannuation funds. Sounds like we're talking about Australia or New Zealand here. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, Increased yeah, our be. superannuation contributions to 6% each with a 3% employer match, plus a government contribution of $520. Ah, here it is. Here in New Zealand, we have the Kiwi Saver, which is a cheap and efficient way to invest for retirement. Uh, we cash flowed $4,500 worth of minor renovations. We used our new and improved budget and financial positions to quit a job, which had me commuting two hours each way twice a week at a cost of $7,000 per year. And that was uh, in exchange for now something that has less hours uh, required and only an eight minute commute. We decreased our daughter's hour at daycare, which was a financial win. We get 20 hours of free early childhood education here in New Zealand. So now we're only topping that up to 30 hours a week, not 40, but you know, better for her and us to have more time together unsubscribe to many, many, many marketing retail emails. I got to tell you guys, I've been getting back on that bandwagon and well, taking the time, not, not just press delete, but actually unsubscribe. There, there's something free in there. Utilize a free hour of power deal with our power provider to save an average 7% on our power bill each month. Downsized our car to take advantage of the full personal use clause my husband has on his work truck, which means our petrol bill was cut in half and insurance costs went down. We put in place all the insurance we need to protect what matters most, our, our health, life, home, and the car, which would be a pain if we didn't have it, and the cat. Contributed $520 to our daughter's superannuation fund, which n now nearly has a balance of $3,000. She's four years old, and that is a, <laughs> that's impressive. Overall, we increased our net worth by $125,000 this year. And since the 1st of July, 2018, which is when we originally found you guys, we've improved our net worth by 200K. Our only debt is our mortgage well on the path to financial independence. Thanks for all you do. Well, Tracy, thank you for sharing with us. What an incredible year. Goodness. That is quite a year. And it's just, it's amazing how far the reach of this community is, right? I mean, Tracy is in New Zealand and listening to the podcast a part of the financial independence community and well on their path to FI. So huge congrats, Tracy. All right, Jonathan, the next one I've got is from Robert. And he said, my year in review after coming across Choose FI in January of 2020, I paid off both of my vehicles and sell, sold one, what, what single guy needs to, finally stopped running up amounts on my credit card and eliminated all credit card debt. Debit cards helped me personally to set limits on my spending. This has truly allowed me to unlock my ability to save as well. I used to be a, quote, stock picker. 100% of my portfolio was in individually owned equities, a big no-no from a diversification perspective. 80% of my portfolio is now in low-cost index funds, and I sleep so great at night. I no longer have to worry about timing the market or being outsized with one company. Geo-arbitrage. I moved from a 700-square-foot apartment paying $1,500 a month in rent to a mid-sized city where I can own my own home. And he said, it's a great time to look for another job with inflation so high, labor so competitive, and knowing that I worked really hard this year, I laid out the framework to my boss as to why I was deserving of a raise. He jokingly said they were gonna cut my wages. That's fine. I went out and found a firm with a 30% pay raise and sign-on bonus. I can laugh at the joke now. <laughs> How I am fantastic. the power. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the FU money that, that we amazing. talk about a little bit here. That's amazing. Right? Good for him. And finally, I started a 529 education savings plan. I know Chooseify is really into certifications, but some careers still do require continued education. I contribute bi-monthly into the 529 plan 
that can be used if I ever decide to go back to school, or if not, can be used for my kids' education. Worth noting, this can also be used for trade schools, and the tax savings, if your state has an income tax and tax-free, would highly suggest. I would have never guessed at the beginning of this year that I would be able to transform so much. Thank you for the wisdom you share each week. I still have plenty of room to grow and looking forward to what this next year can bring. Damn. That was awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. I, so I, you know, I think one of my favorite types of stories, just generally, when I get a chance to encounter them is, you know, F you money stories. Uh, I can think of, you know, my own brings me a lot of joy. And then uh, Joel from 5180, his F you money story brought me a lot of joy when I've heard it, the couple of times I've heard it. And people just sharing via email how they've been able to leverage the fact that they recognize that in many, many, most cases, their employer needs them more than they need their employer. So the trade-off needs to be fair. And if you're not being valued, go find, go where you are valued. Yeah, that's how, that's how it's going to work. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. So anyways, building on that, we'll continue with this. We got a voicemail and I'll go ahead and play that now. All right. This voicemail is from Landshark. Hey, Brad and Jonathan, this is the Landshark. 2021 has been a great year for the Landshark. We increased our net worth by more than 30%. I started my blog at landshark.org where I'm writing about my fire journey. And I just gave notice at work and I'll be officially retiring from the practice of law in early 2022 at the age of 43. Thanks for all that you do and have a happy new year. All right, I'm going to check out landshark.org. Awesome. I'm there right now. Okay, Landshark Financial. <laughs> so we got a few articles here. My in-laws in early retirement. Oh, that sounds like a financial conversation over the dinner table. Uh, <laughs> Landshark net worth update. How much money do you really need? What I have to say about early retirement, household spending. This is good stuff. Retirement withdrawal strategy, critical importance of tracking your net worth. Bunch of articles there. Yeah. And Landshark is actually a great follow on Twitter. I know I've told you, Jonathan, I think I've mentioned once on the podcast that I'm actually uh, trying to be a lot more active on Twitter. So you can find me at Brad Choose FI. But yeah, Landshark's a, a good follow there. And I think he literally just gave notice like yesterday at, at his firm. So this is a, a big deal. So congrats. Huge congrats. All right, I think we got time for just a couple more, and I apologize to everybody that we're not reading. It's it's not intentional. We just literally are running out of time here. Yeah, Jonathan, I got a great one here from Cheryl. Year end wins. I'm 53, and due to life circumstances like a divorce, I admittedly started late. Oh well, no crying over lost time. It's not coming back. I found Choose If I for the first time around March of 2021. Binge listened to your shows during my commute to and from the hospital where I work gave me a lot of motivation and things to look forward to. Believe me, it's been tough to look forward to a lot of things working in healthcare during a pandemic. This year, I managed to pay off my student loan, fully fund a Roth IRA, increase my 403B contributions to 20%, switch to Mint Mobile, and I recently joined the Talent Stacker Salesforce Career yes. Development Program. <laughs> With my full-time job in healthcare, and unfortunately some health issues of my own, making this career pivot could take me a while. FI for me is obviously not about early retirement. It's about having any retirement. Oh, and one more thing. After listening about travel hacking, I remembered that I was sitting on about 220,000 miles that are still valid on a credit card I already have. I still have a lot of logistics to figure out, but I've made a promise to myself that I'm going to find a way to spend one month sabbatical in Hawaii. Oh, that's awesome. Keep up the good work, friends. What you do is life-changing for people. Happy holidays and happy new year. You know, it struck me. I think one thing with the uh, credit card points is that some of the cards, the maybe the the um, some of the cards, and the less more of the hotel ones, not so much the the you know Chase Sapphire preferred, obviously, but more the like the Marriott ones in particular. They have like expiration dates that historically have been attached to if you don't use the points, you lose it. But Brad, I believe it's just a guess, but in this kind of COVID era that we seem to be living in right now, uh, some of them have kind of suspended the expiration date on those points. Is that still accurate? Yeah. Oh, Jonathan, you're going to make <laughs> me go into a whole long-winded thing on Traveler Worth Here. <laughs> uh, yeah, there have been a lot of extended expiration dates. The airlines and hotels have been pretty great with that, uh, in my opinion. So you can always log into your rewards account. So just to specify here, I, I'm not sure, obviously, what card Cheryl's talking about, but many of the airline and hotel credit cards that you have, those points get sent to your airline or hotel rewards account. 
okay, for let's say Hyatt or like you said, Marriott or United, whatever. And those points are no longer related to the credit card. They just exist in your account, like your United Mileage Plus account. So whatever the expiration policy is there, you can just find out by logging into, in that case, your United account, right? And you just go to my account and it'll say pretty clearly points expire on X date. And yeah, like you said, I've seen them uh, be pretty good about that, but also any activity at all extends mm. the expiration date. So there's usually, you, you have to try pretty hard to have them expire, honestly, as long as like, if you're aware of this, you can pretty much have them extend almost indefinitely just by being a little bit smart about it, being a little bit aware. So yeah, Jonathan, I'm glad you brought that Sorry up. Sorry to throw is, you under the, yeah, the spot bus no, there, but no, I guess no. the, the one big thing is if you have like a Chase Sapphire preferred card, and it's maintained your points when they're hosted by Chase Sapphire Prefer, they are they have no expiration date. So Chase is a great place to hold your points until you decide to use them for that reason. It's a it's a massive simplification when it comes to it. Yeah, spot on. Okay. This next message we got was from Emma, who says, here's my year in review, most of which has been inspired by the five movement. I started my own coaching business and I never saw myself being a business owner before this. Volunteered in the community to get resources to kids uh, most in need. Spent quality time with family and friends, including renting a Sprinter van to take a trip with my partner and backpacking with my best friend. I invested in a community solar project. Oh, that's interesting. I'd be more, very interested in hearing more about that. Leaned into and took hundreds of actions on my health journey, including taking four weeks of sick leave from work, getting a diagnosis, starting a treatment, and assembling my health support team. Refinanced my house and invested most of the funds, which led to reaching Coast Fi several years early. I enrolled in a coach training program, to support my uh, growing career options while doing what I love in years to come. I bought an old hybrid to achieve adventure goals in a frugal way. I requested a reduced work schedule. Fingers crossed that I get it. It's been a really big year and I'm grateful for the incremental freedom. Now, the reason I read this is we got a follow-up email about a week or two later, later where Mo said, I'm happy to share that my reduced work schedule, 32 hours a week, has been approved. I thought I would have to take a 20% pay cut reduction, but since I've did diligently saved a large leave bank over the years, I get to use that instead. I get to keep my full-time salary and work a four-day week to support my health and other life goals is the triple win, triple win. Win for health, win for time, win for finances. I'm feeling very grateful to have been able to see that this is a possibility and get it approved. Wow. Damn, triple win indeed. Congrats, Emma. That is awesome. All right, this last email that we got for the, our episode today, wrapping up our year-end wins, is from Jenna. All right, Jenna said, I found Chooseify a year ago, and it's been life-changing. Chooseify gave me the tools and the motivation to finally get on the same page with my husband and take action in a big way. Here's a list of the things we have tackled this year. We've paid off $63,000 mm -hmm. in credit card and car debt. We changed from whole life insurance to term, saving $5,100 a year, refinanced our home to a 15-year mortgage, getting rid of PMI and getting a 1% lower interest rate. We'll max out 403B for the first time. We'll max out IRAs for me and my husband for the first time. We switched phone carriers from Verizon to US Mobile, saving $90 a month. We opened an ABLE account for our disabled daughter and we'll max out for the year, which is a state tax exempt account. We opened a UTMA account for our younger daughter. We began using travel rewards and took a free week-long trip to Hawaii. We quit three streaming services we didn't use, saving $65 per month. We cut our monthly expenses to the point that I could go PRN at my job as a pharmacist to stay home full-time with my girls. Nice. 12. Finally, I'm having an honest conversation with my husband about money. And we are being intentional about our finances for the first time. And we increased our net worth from $30,000 to $155,000 in one year. To say the least, taking action on all those items will change the trajectory of our lives and our children's lives. We are looking at FI in 10 to 15 years now instead of a lifetime chain to debt. From the bottom of my heart, thank you, Brad and Jonathan, for getting this message out so that families like mine can have a better future. You know, she, Thank she you. mentioned in there the, uh, the, the ABLE account. And I just, it, this information is so hard to find. So parents that are trying to come up with a financial plan may have kids with special needs that will go ongoing care, need ongoing care into adulthood. Uh, 
that information is hard to find. And William, who's on our team, our chief uh, chief technology officer, he has two kids with special needs. And he came on the show uh, back, it was episode 108, and he talked about setting up a special needs trust. And I know that information was really well received by the community. It's hard to find information. And William has really done his due diligence. So I think if you are wondering, how does this translate or what additional considerations uh, should, you know, should I be contemplating if I find myself in that such particular financial situation, I think episode 108 would be well worth your time. So thank you, Jenna, for sharing. And, and I just wanted to point out, if you've gotten value from these two episodes, if you've been inspired, if you've been intrigued and you've wanted to use whatever you heard as, I think maybe I do need to do a little more explore, exploration here. It sounds like someone with a similar financial picture has made moves and I would like to emulate that or figure out how to get on that path. You can get this every week in your inbox via our bi-weekly newsletter. Brad shares community wins each and every week. And a lot of times we think of these as springboards to drive you into content that we have been able to put together over the past five years now. There's a wealth of information here. And while many people will start at episode one, work their way through the you know several hundred episodes that have been created, uh, I recognize that some of you may find that an intimidating prospect and you don't necessarily have to do that. You know, Pick what works for you. And in which case, being on the Spy Weekly newsletter would give you a way to get into the content that serves you faster, using other people's wins as inspiration for your own personal journey. So with that, thank you for being a part of this community. Thank you for supporting this community with your wins and for being with us into 2022 and beyond. And I would just say, share it with a friend, share it with a family member, consider uh, letting them know about episode 100 just as a gateway to this conversation. And, uh, you know, in this world, you, uh, you can make nearly an unlimited number of choices we both recommend. And I think this community would recommend that you choose financial independence. All right, my friends of fire spreading. We'll see you next time as we continue to go down the road less traveled. Oh, wait, I should probably say how to check out the newsletter. Uh, go to chooseify.com slash subscribe. That's how you get on the newsletter. That's how you get the Fire Weekly. All right, guys, we'll see you in 2022.